and uh, there are certain guidelines that we have to follow in order to be successful as far as uh, not having government problems. Uh, there's always some government issues, but we want to keep them to a minimum, and by and therefore we must uh, endeavor to follow certain guidelines that have been presented to us. Has this technology been around for a while, and and is it something that uh, maybe nobody took off and actually implemented in the past, or is this something that's just brand new? That's a good question, Steve. The, uh, the history of this stuff dates way, way, way back. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll tell a little story, a true story, that uh, a lot of people may or may not have trouble believing. But gravity motors is one particular type of free energy device that has been around for literally thousands of years. As you know, I've been ministering in 14 different countries in my life, and one of them, uh, back about 10 years ago or so, was China. And uh, I, was, I was invited to take a tour of one of the ancient temples, what they call the temple. And, uh, and actually, when I was in there, I was pretty sure the lower parts of that temple were a scientific uh, lab. Uh, I've been in enough labs, we've had enough labs. We've had over 30 labs since I started. And I immediately recognized several of the ancient trinkets that they had sitting on the tables and hanging around that this, this was some sort of scientific lab. And uh, one of the drawings on the wall represented a gravity motor. It was as clear as day as to me because we built, uh, we've built uh, probably close to a thousand gravity motors now. And uh, not all of them have worked, but uh, we've had 11 different models self-turning. But uh, of those 11, one of these, one of the, the one on the wall looked a lot like one of the 11. I'll put it that way. And I immediately asked the tour guide, who spoke English, uh, if what this represented on the wall. And she said uh, it was uh, an ancient depiction of the yin yang symbol. Isn't that the symbol of balance? Yeah, the symbol of balance, and that's of course what she explained. But it didn't look anything. It didn't look much like the yin yang symbol. It looked uh, there was definitely parts. Definitely, you could see motion by the arrows, uh, and there was writing there as well on that wall right next on both sides of this big circle. The circle was about four or five feet in diameter. Was the writing in English? No, of course it was. Uh, I asked the lady what sort of writing it was, and she said it's ancient Chinese. This temple supposedly dated back 5,000 years, is what she said. And uh, I asked her if anybody here could read it. There was about six or eight people with us uh, in the tour, and of course nobody could read it. Uh, but they, you know, they don't know what it says. Basically, they said it's a lost language, that particular language. Nobody knows what, exactly what it says. But uh, I would guess that it was explaining that it's a gravity motor, and I have seen writing since then from the Chinese, even on the yin yang symbol. I think the yin yang symbol was relating to gravity motors because it talks about balance and it talks about perpetual turning and so on in some of the writings with the yin yang symbol. So uh, I think even that was a short version of that motor, just like we draw a little arrow with a line for it for a diode, they had a circle. With two little, with a with an S through it, basically uh, representing the representing gravity motors, and it came to be a religious icon after a certain number of years and so on. But uh, I think originally, I'm I'm sure originally it, it referred to the gravity motor. Were there others in history that had knowledge of you know this type of technology in the past that uh, maybe never got to the market? Yeah, I'm sure moving forward in time, I'm sure there's been many discoveries and rediscoveries of these type of technologies. It's easy to lose them because they're highly technical uh, and civilizations rise and fall. And so even though this technology has been here before, it's easy for it to, uh, like I say, it's easy for it to get lost. If a big war happens, a big famine, a big sickness, uh, even if... Uh, like in the Bible, you'd see different kings get mad and he'd line up all the wise men and have them executed. Well, the wise men were basically scientists. Some of them were magicians and, uh, and practiced different types of magic. Uh, you could say Wiccans and, and uh, so on and so forth. It probably would be an equivalent today. Uh, but uh, the king would execute all the wise men. Of course, that 
and when he gets mad at him and for some reason and of course that would uh, really set back science and endeavor and and people wouldn't know how anything worked and so on because all the guys that built those things are dead and they'd execute the families as well so even the children that might have learned a few things from their dad they'd get executed as well and so that that really has a way of setting things back plus one arm one kingdom would take over another kingdom and that would set things back plus uh the kings themselves a lot of times wanted to keep the best stuff secret and so uh, they would make sure only a few people knew it and then if those people wind up dying that would set things back but moving forward in time about uh, your question basically other people that have discovered it and uh, so on uh, I would say about 300 years ago was the first white man the first person from our culture uh, and he was a German and his name was Johann Bessler, and uh, he traveled quite extensively and learned many trades, uh, similar background uh, to what most of our people, most of our scientists, to have a good scientist, you need to learn many trades. You need to travel extensively. It helps you get well-rounded and realize what the world's all about. Johann Bessler worked for five or six years to build a gravity motor and finally succeeded but he was also a master clockmaker and a master uh, organ maker and many other musical instruments the organ was the most complicated machine they probably had at that time and uh, he was he was the maker of it he was a master he was also a medical doctor and uh, the man eventually figured out how to make a gravity motor and uh, he demonstrated it for most of his life and finally wound up dying at 60 some years old and uh, basically the machine was lost to mankind because uh, he never could sell it he tried to sell it for many many years and never really got a buyer uh, but that's the history of Johann Bessler then moving forward in time we come to Keeley uh, actually just before Keeley there was a few others uh, we had um, of course, we had Michael Faraday uh, quite a bit before Keeley, and uh, he started basically the renaissance in electricity, or he was considered the father of electromagnetism by many people. Before, before him, just before him, was Benjamin Franklin. Uh, but basically, uh, the advanced technology started coming out again with uh, about the time of uh, Nathan Stubblefield, which uh, a contemporary of Nathan's was the guy in France, which is, his name is D'Arsonval. Uh, I don't remember his first name, but um, D'Arsonval was in France and he built uh, a number of energy devices that would produce extra energy, electrical energy devices, quantum energy devices, if you want to call it that. And uh, Nathan Stubblefield was doing the same thing here in America. He was from um, he's either from uh, Pennsylvania or Kentucky or both I forget but um, I know he lived for a while in Kentucky and I believe he lived a while in Pennsylvania so he was probably doing his work in both places uh, and he actually was the first one that I know of that ran houses and he's putting his own house on quantum energy and that was over 130 years ago Sounds like a, quite a history there, and a lot of your technology is built upon some of this knowledge that was gained uh, and revisited from the past and brought forward in today's uh, uh, marketplace, uh, and that's what you're trying to accomplish? Amen. Yeah, God has always had a plan to get this stuff out, and he has called different ones to bring it into the world. But just like in history, the prophets, the people God calls, the prophets and the teachers, to bring things forth they get treated badly and they get persecuted and they get killed jesus said which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute and uh it's exactly true it's a hundred percent the case there's been uh, uh, a huge amount of opposition to any good technology that might help mankind and that's again the reason that men and women are being called everywhere everybody needs to get on the stick and start helping uh and uh because it's it's going to take a group effort. It's something that's going to help every single person, so every single person needs to help a little bit. 